We're going to look at Acts chapter 5, verses 17 through 42. So today we look at some of the fallout from all the great things that were happening with all the miracles and the, the preaching of the apostles. So here we go, verse 17. Then the high priest and all his associates, who were members of the party of the Sadducees, were filled with jealousy. They arrested the apostles and put them in the public jail. But during the night, an angel of the Lord opened the doors of the jail and brought them out. Go stand in the temple courts, he said, and tell the people the full message of this new life. At daybreak, they entered the temple courts, as they had been told, and began to teach the people. When the high priest and his associates arrived, they called together the Sanhedrin, the full assembly of the elders of Israel, and sent to the jail for the apostles. But on arriving at the jail, the, the officers did not find them there. So they went back and reported, We found the jail securely locked with the guards standing at the doors, but when we opened them, we found no one inside. On hearing this report, the captain of the temple guard and the chief priests were puzzled, wondering what would come of this. Then someone came and said, Look, the men you put in jail are standing in the temple courts teaching the people. At that, the captain went with his officers and brought the apostles. They did not use force because they feared that the people would stone them. Having brought the apostles, they made them appear before the Sanhedrin to be questioned by the high priest. We gave you strict orders not to teach in this name, he said, yet you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching and are determined to make us guilty of this man's blood. Peter and the other apostles replied, We must obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers raised Jesus from the dead, whom you had killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him to his own right hand as prince and savior, and that he might give repentance and forgiveness of sins to Israel. We are witnesses of these things, and so is the Holy Spirit whom God has given to those who obey Him. When they heard this, they were furious and wanted to put them to death. But a Pharisee named Gamaliel, a teacher of the law, who was honored by all the people, stood up in the Sanhedrin and ordered that the men be put outside for a little while. Then he addressed them, Men of Israel, consider carefully what you intend to do to these men. Some time ago, Theudas appeared, claiming to be somebody, and about 400 men rallied to him. He was killed, and all his followers were dispersed, and it all came to nothing. After him, Judas the Galilean appeared in the days of the census and led a band of people in revolt. He too was killed, and all his followers were scattered. Therefore, in the present case, I advise you, leave these men alone, let them go. For if their purpose or activity is of human origin, it will fail." But if it is from God, you will not be able to stop these men. You will only find yourselves fighting against God. His speech persuaded them. They called the apostles in and had them flogged. Then they ordered them not to speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. The apostles left the Sanhedrin rejoicing because they had been counted worthy of suffering disgrace for the name. Day after day in the temple courts and from house to house, they never stopped teaching and proclaiming the good news that Jesus is the Christ. So, really some pretty funny stuff in that. <laughs> they, uh, you know, the apostles get put in prison, but a angel gets them out, and apparently the doors are still locked. Somehow that worked out. And they're teaching the people while the uh, Sanhedrin, all the the Jewish leaders are trying to figure out where they're at. So that's good stuff. Um, and there just is continued opposition. You know, I love verse 20, what the angel said to them. He said, go stand in the temple courts and tell the people the full message of this new life. The message of what? The message of a new life. It isn't said here the message of, you know, forgiveness and going to heaven. The message of a new life. Now, this new life is a life today and eternal life. So, the message, the full message, is how you live now, trusting in God, serving the Lord, walking in His ways, walking in the Holy Spirit, and of course, trusting God for everlasting life. So, that's the message that the angel uh, of the Lord wanted to make sure they were getting out there, and so they go out there and they do that. But tempers continue to flare. There's much jealousy from 
the number of miracles that the apostles are doing, plus their teaching uh, a doctrine which the Sadducees, the high priest was a Sadducee, so they don't believe in the resurrection of the dead. And so that doctrine of Jesus rising from the dead is a direct contradiction to what the high priest believes. So you've got doctrinal disagreements, you've got jealousy because everybody likes the people who are doing the miracles, and there just gets to be this big mess. Uh, tempers are flaring, but then Gamaliel calms everybody down. I like this guy. Good logic. It's all smart. They look. He says, look, you know, Jesus was killed. These other leaders were killed. Their people wandered off. Jesus was killed. If he, hadn't, if he was doing nothing, these people will wander off. But if what he does, what, what's going on here is from God, you don't want to find yourself fighting against God. So just let these people go. So they still flog them, which means they beat them up. You know, they hit them with sticks or whatever they did. Uh, you know, they flogged them, but then they let them go. And what was the response of the apostles after the flogging? They went away rejoicing. You know, they were happy that they uh, were able to be counted worthy of suffering disgrace for the name of Jesus. That's just a, a important way to respond. They didn't cry, why, we're trying to do good, and God, you let us get beat up. No, they weren't sad at all. They were rejoicing. They're like, we're on the front end of this battle, man. It's going good. We're actually making something happen here. So they were rejoicing and standing together for the good things of God, even in the face of opposition. So let's pray. Let's believe to be the same way. Heavenly Father, we know that you back up and you are with those who serve you. And so we trust you in that. Lord, when we face opposition and difficulty, Lord, help us to rejoice. If we face disgrace for your name, help us to rejoice in that, knowing that we're on the front lines of the battle and that we're actually getting hard work done that needs to be done. And Lord, if we're not facing that, if things are going great, hallelujah for that. We thank you for peace. We thank you for good times as well. But Lord, help us to stand strong for you, even in the face of opposition and uh, even in the face of growing opposition as the apostles were threatened before, but now they're threatened and flogged, and uh, it seems to be ramping up. But Lord, uh, help us to be faithful to you, even if we see things getting worse. Help us to stand strong for you. In Jesus' name, amen.